Hey there, welcome back. So today, we're going to be making a setup where we have a certain number of goals for the level. And today we're just doing the back end of that, actually coding in what the goals are, recognizing when the goals are met, and then next time we'll start talking about the UI for it. So in this case, I have a level set up here that has a goal of three pinks and five blues. So if I swap here, my three pinks will go away, and then I get a little message saying that my goal was met. And now if I get five blue pieces here, really quickly, I get a little message saying that my goal was met again. So um, let's uh, dive right in and get this started. Diving right in, what we want to do is make a new node, part of our main game window, that's going to hold whatever our goals are going to be. And so we could have, you know, two goals, one goal, three goals, doesn't matter. So what I want to do is on my game window, highlight that, I'm going to create a new node of type just node. I don't need any of the node 2D stuff. And I'm going to rename this goal holder. Uh, and it was brought up that I have a tendency to um, use different cases when I'm making these, and that's just a total bad habit of mine. The standard in Godot, the best practices, is to use Pascal case when you're doing these. Um, and I just, I don't know, for some reason, I'm doing Pascal case, I'm doing no case, I'm doing snake case. I'm just doing all kinds of stuff here, so I'm going to try to be a bit more consistent. Anyway, this goal holder is going to hold our goals, and that number of goals will vary level to level. So now what I want to do is I want to make a new scene, and this new scene is going to have, again, just a node as its base, since I don't need to have any of the node 2D functionality. I'm going to add to this a script. So this is going to be a new script, and I'm going to put this in my scripts folder, and I'm going to call this... Uh, instead of node, I'm going to call it goal, and I'll create that. Now in here, this is just going to hold our information. This would be the equivalent of just creating like a custom class in C-sharp that I would need to serialize. So instead of creating a custom class, I'm creating a custom node because that's how Godot works. You only have one script per node. So in here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a reference to... Maybe Whitmire, please come to the office. Sorry for that weird cut. So in here I'm going to have a reference to uh, everything that I need to know about for my goal. So this is going to be goal information. Let me get this into distraction free mode here. So what I want to know is I'm going to need to have a texture for it because I'm going to be communicating this information to the UI. So this is going to be an export of type texture, var goal texture, uh, so that I can have something in the UI that reflects it. I want to have a uh, max number, so I'm going to have this be an export integer value var max needed. Uh, I need to have a string value, which is how we're defining which piece is which, so export string var uh, we'll call this goal string. And then last thing I need to do is have a local variable that's going to keep track of how many have been collected. So this is going to be a var uh, number collected, and I'm going to default that to zero. So I don't need either the ready or the process functions, so I can get rid of those right away. What I need to do instead is I'm going to make two helper functions. So my first helper function is going to check to see if the goal that we're receiving information about is compatible with this particular goal. So I'm going to say function check goal. And this is going to be passed in a value of that string, the goals string. So I'm just going to have this be uh, goal type. Now what I want to do is I want to check if goal type is the same thing as the goal string, then I'm going to do something else with that. So I'm going to create another helper function here to increase the number of current goals that we have and then realize when we've collected all of that goal that we need. So this is function update goal. 
and this doesn't need an argument into it. Uh, instead, I'm just going to say um, if number collected is less than uh, max needed, then I'm going to increase the number collected, plus equals 1. And then I want to say if number collected is equal to max needed, then I'm going to print goal met. So it's just going to tell me that I met that goal. All right, cool. So I'm going to cancel. Um, so I want to save this. I'm going to go out of distraction free mode here. I'm going to rename this from node to goal. And then I'll save the scene. So save scene in my scenes folder. Save. Now I'm going to go back into my game window here. And on my goal holder, I'm going to add a script to that. So a new script, goal holder, it's going to go in my scripts folder. Save. And we're going to create this. And this is essentially just going to accept a, um, it's going to accept a signal and then perform a, a process. So what I want to do for the process, I'm going to do function check goals. And then this is going to require an argument to be passed in of what that, uh, that piece is. So we'll call this goal type. And what I'm going to do when I check the goals is I'm going to go for i in get child count. So for as many children as this has, and this is going to have the goals as children, I want to say um, uh, get child, and the child I want to get is child i dot check goals, and then I'm going to pass in the goal type. And I think I called it check goals. I know I, I seriously just made it. It's check goal, singular. All right. So I'm going to save that. I'll get rid of this pass function here. And now um, I need to have a signal that is going to trigger checking all the goals. So I'm going to go to my grid script here. And I'm going to make a signal to you know, tell everything in the scene what was just destroyed. And I'll make this near the counter variables because that makes sense to me. So I'll say um, goal check stuff. And this is going to be a signal check goal. Now, the place that it makes the most sense to do this would be in my destroy matched function here. So I'm going to go down to find destroy matched, which is down here. And now I need to do this before. I queue free the piece. So right before I damage special, I'm going to emit signal. And the signal is check goal. And I'm going to send out all pieces i j dot color. All right, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to go out of distraction free mode here. Click on my grid, check my signals, grab check goal, connect that to my goal holder and then all this is going to do is just cause check goals and then this should have um, a type coming through it and so goal type and goal type and then I can get rid of this little pass function down here and I'm going to save that and that should be it for now like that's all the logic um, if we're destroying like the, the ice, the lock, the slime, we're going to have to emit another signal telling you know what it is so that that can match up with it. But we can cover that next time when we cover the UI. So if I save this, I'm going to hit play. And oh, hey, I didn't actually make any goals. So before I do that, I'm going to go to my goal holder. And I'm going to link a scene in my scenes. This is the goal scene. And I'm going to do a couple of these, so I'm just going to duplicate this twice. So my first goal, I'm going to say I need 5, and my string for it is blue. My second goal, I'm going to say I need 3, and my string for that is pink. And then my third goal, I'm going to say I need 10, and I'm going to use a string that I don't have. So I'm going to say like 
white. I don't have any pieces that are white. So I just want to check to make sure that this isn't going to cause an issue. I don't need to worry about the textures yet. That's going to be with the UI. So I'm going to save everything. And then let's hit play. And let's keep an eye on uh, our output over there so we can make sure that the print statements are printing like they should. So blue, I think I put five. So there's three blue. There's three more. Hmm, okay. Maybe I spelled it wrong. So there's pink, there's yellow, green, more pink. Okay, well, clearly something's wrong. So let's see if we can fix this here. So, goal holder. This has, let's make sure that my grid is sending the signal correctly. So check goal, all pieces ij dot color. Yep, and that should be it. And then we're sending check goal into the goal holder, or we're checking goal type. And then we're going through get child i, check goal, goal type. Oh, ha, huh. I'm not doing anything with it. So uh, this check goal needs to call the update goal. So update goal. So there we go. I can get rid of these two pass statements now. Save that and let's try it now. So um, I want to aim for either blue or pink. So there we go. That was three pink. Goals already met. Um, let's see, the other one was blue. So let me try and get some blue pieces near each other here. Um, <laughs> so that allows me to get these two together. And then if I get three more blue, it should satisfy everything. Oh, right over here, I could have done that right away. And there we go. It triggered goal net twice because um, I ended up having six. So when it hit five, it gave me a goal net. And then when they did another one, it gave me a goal net. Now, same thing here. I can emit a signal from here, or from the slime, concrete, or lock, or ice holder that would check for ice. And then my goal can just have ice as the string, and then I can have the texture on there. We'll cover that next time, though. And we'll also start covering the UI for this so that we can actually have it in the scene so that we can know when we've met our goals. Then we're going to check to see when we've met all goals. And when all goals are met, we will trigger a you win animation similar to the game over. So. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting pretty far along here. We're getting pretty close to having a fully featured game. So uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Otherwise, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. You can join the Discord. Tons of really good people there. And yeah, have yourselves a wonderful day. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.